How to join yarn in knitting. 10 techniques from easy to invisible. Who doesn't know this problem? You are currently working on a lovely project and suddenly your yarn runs out. And now what? What do you do? How do you join a new ball? It's actually quite easy and nothing to be afraid of. However, depending on your project and the yarn you are using, you may need a different technique. And that's why I'll show you all together 10 different ways to join a new yarn in this tutorial. We'll start with very simple and easy methods for beginners, some techniques where you don't actually need to weave in the ends, and towards the end of the video, some really invisible and super secure methods even advanced knitters will find interesting, like when you're knitting with multiple colors or very slippery yarn and so on. So let's dive right into it, but before, please like this video to support my work and make sure to comment in case you have a question. And if you already have a favorite way to join in a new yarn, then comment and share which version you like best. Joining method number one, tie a simple knot. The first and easiest technique to join yarn in knitting is tying a simple knot. But there are a couple of rules you need to observe to make this a viable technique. First of all, don't add a new skein in the middle of a row with a knot, because what will happen as you knit across this knot here, it may wiggle its way through to the front, and that's not going to be very pretty. Instead, only join in a new ball at the beginning of a row. So pick up the new color the way you normally would, leave a little tail here, and then simply knit across. The first stitches may be a bit loose, so you can tighten them up a bit, and then simply knit across. And then, this is important, while the stitches are still on the needle, tie a loose knot, just a simple loose knot, like this, and then continue knitting. If you tie the knot later on, you might close these stitches and that might mess up your edge stitches. And once you're finished, untie the knot, thread the tail on a tapestry needle, and weave in those ends um, the regular way. I'll link you my comprehensive tutorial on how to weave in ends up in here and in the description below. In case you need to catch up or you are looking for easier or neater options you are not aware of yet. And after you wove in the tails, this is what it will look like. It will be totally invisible, unlike this knot here in the middle. The second super easy method to join in a new ball of yarn is called the wet splice or the felted splice. This is a super easy and smart way to join two yarns together and works anywhere in your knitting and not just at the edges. Simply pick apart the two ends so they look a bit like a fan. So do it like this. And then wet these two ends. I usually just put them in my mouth, but of course you can also use a bit of water. And then stack these two ends on top of each other and then put them in the palm of your hands. And then rub them together with quite a bit of pressure. You will notice how your uh, hands will get warm. And there you go. You felted these two ends together and you will easily be able to continue knitting. There are two modifications I would like to mention. Um, I mean, what you're doing is you're stacking two lengths of yarn on top of each other, and as a result, uh, the felted uh, part will be twice as thick. So what you can do is you can thin out those ends a tiny bit before you felt them together to ensure that the join doesn't end up being too thick. And what you can also do is you can overlap first and then wet your palms and 
then wrap together. So it really doesn't matter which way you do it, just you know it's personal preference. But how but if your yarn allows it, then I would recommend thinning it out a bit. This technique has two limitations. First of all, it just works for feldable fibers, and that's why I switched yarn here. So if you're working with a superwash yarn, acrylic, or cotton, like in this case, it won't work. But for the average rusted cheap wool, it works like a charm. And obviously, if you're doing color work, this technique isn't feasible either, unless you are okay with a very visible and somewhat messy transition. But if you want to join uh, two yarns of the same color, it's perfect. Joining method number three, overlap and knit double. If you have a somewhat fuzzy yarn that felts well, you can also knit a couple of stitches with two strands held together. So a couple of stitches before your yarn runs out. Pick up the ball and overlap the tail like this. So there are two ends here. And then pick up those two strands held together. And then you just knit a couple of stitches, say six or so, five or six stitches, uh, with two strands held together. And then you drop the old yarn, it's probably going to be too short anyway. And then you just continue knitting with the new yarn. And when you come across these double stitches in the return row or next round, simply treat them as one and knit or purl them together. And don't knit them separately because this will create increases and that's probably not what you want. If you are worried that you might miss it, then you can uh, place stitch markers to uh, mark the position. And later on, you can simply cut away those tails. There is no need to weave in ends. And I guess this is the beauty of this technique. Obviously, this technique can become quite noticeable, especially if you're using a heavier yarn or knitting with a tighter gauge. And if you're knitting with a slippery yarn like cotton or so, then um, the tail might wiggle through to the front. But if you're using a very fussy yarn like mohair or so, this will be just perfect. Number four, weave in as you go. If you want to avoid this noticeable thicker section in your project, you can also weave in and out as you go. So a couple of stitches before your yarn runs out, you place the new yarn in between your working yarn and your knitting needle, like this. And then you knit one stitch, knit one stitch. And then you twist these two yarns around once. And then you knit one more stitch. Then you twist around once. And knit one stitch. And repeat that for five or six stitches or so. We'll just do four here. And then pick up the new yarn knit one stitch and again twist the yarns around knit one stitch twist around and so on so first you twist around the new yarn and then you twist around the old yarn let's do one more stitch here and once you're satisfied, you can just continue knitting the normal way. You can also use the same technique to um, join in a new color, maybe because you want to knit stripes. So knit one stitch and twist. Knit one stitch and twist. Knit one stitch. And twist and do that for again six or uh, eight stitches maybe. And later on you can just cut those tails away. Just cut them away. Like this. 
there you go. This is what it looks like on the wrong side. So it is a bit noticeable here, but on the right side, it will be totally invisible, unlike these double stitches here. So it can be a really viable option. Again, this works best for slightly fuzzy yarns. I wouldn't actually do this for cotton yarns because these ends here can come undone. Number five, twist and weave. A very, very neat way to join in a new ball is called twist and weave. It's a bit more complicated at first, but it's so versatile and it works basically in every circumstance and with every yarn for color work, for cotton, whatever. So here's how to do that. Pick up the new color, the color you want to join the regular way. And then insert your knitting needle into the first stitch. And now take this new yarn and place it here in between your knitting needles. Secure the tail with your thumb. Then bring up the old tail and cross it over the new yarn. Pick up the tail again and bring it here in between your knitting needle. And then wrap the yarn around the knitting needle uh, the way you would for a normal knit stitch. And now bring the yarn around the other way. And now you have to pull in this direction. And here is your knit stitch. And you can pull that through and secure these tails. And you joined in the yarn in a super, super invisible way. Let's do that one more time. Again, pick up the yarn you want to join the regular way. Then insert your left knee, a uh, right needle into the first stitch and place the yarn here in between your knitting needle. Secure it with your thumb, then bring up the tail of the old yarn, cross it, pick up the new tail, bring it here in between your knitting needles and over, wrap it around. Then wrap the yarn, the working yarn around the knitting needle as if to knit. And then bring this tail around the other way and pull down. There is your stitch and you can uh, pull it through. And just like that, you joined in a new yarn. Let's take a look how it looks like. What I really like about this method is uh, this is the way it looks like on the wrong side. And as you knit across, as you knit across, see this stitch here retains its shape. It doesn't get all that much bigger because it's that secure. And this is a super slippery cotton yarn. So this is what it looks like. Now this is the right side here. See how invisible that is and neat. And this is the wrong side. You end up with these, well, knots here. Which means when you're knitting flat, maybe there are better options. However, when you're knitting in the round or when you're doing color work, this is actually the neatest way. Obviously, you will have to weave in those ends later on or it will come undone. Number six, weave in and twist. When I'm knitting in Taja, the previous method is nice, but I actually prefer a different method. So one stitch before the color change, I place the new color in between my working yarn and the knitting needle and then I knit one stitch. And when it's time to change colors, I twist these yarns around like this. And then I continue knitting in the new color. I feel this method actually um, creates neater results and quite frankly, it's a bit easier to memorize. Let's take a look at the differences. So two rows later, this is what it looks like. Now, by the way, if you want to learn how to knit in Taja, I link you my tutorial up in here. So where is the difference really? I think both versions look really, really neat and you will have to weave in ends later on. But when it comes to Intaja, you will end up weaving in a lot of tails. And the difference is this stitch here is anchored on the side. Here, this stitch isn't anchored. So what will happen is when you weave in ends often, you will close this stitch here. And in this case, 
the stitch is anchored so it doesn't happen. So that's why I prefer this method for intaja. Number seven, the Russian join. A method that has become very popular in recent years is the so-called Russian join. Just like for weaving in ends, you will need a sharp tapestry needle for this method to join in a new ball. So thread the tail on a tapestry needle and this tapestry needle should be as small as possible. And now you have to create a loop here and pierce through right through the yarn and that's why you need a sharp tapestry needle. Go right through the yarn, right through the middle for well two or three inches, so quite a bit. Go right through. Things will bunch up here a bit and twist, but that's okay. And now you need to pull it through and this can sometimes be a bit harder and I think my um, my fingers are a bit slippery right now. There you go. You need to pull that through. And here at the end there is a loop and we will need this loop. So pull it through, straighten things out, but keep that loop. And now pick up the yarn you want to join and pull it through that loop. And now again, thread that on a tapestry needle. Uh, uh, this took a while uh, because the yarn is really thick. And uh, see, so here we have, so here we have the loop. And now uh, you, you have to do the exact same on the other side. So again, go here right through the yarn. Go right through it. Take your time. It's important that you go right through it for two or maybe even three inches. And then pull through again. This will uh, be a bit more difficult, as you can see. And that's why I said pick a tapestry needle that is as thin as possible. And now this is what it looks like kind of messy, you might say. Now find those little tails here. And now you can. Uh, Pull these two ends together. Straighten things out a bit. Straighten things out a bit. And there you go. You join those two tails. And what you can do now is uh, find the tail on either side and just cut away uh, the part that you don't need, like so. And then you can continue knitting. Uh, again, this is a method that works better with fuzzy yarns and uh, for cotton maybe not so well, but as you can see it is still quite viable and I can put a lot of pressure on it. So two rows later, this is what it looks like now. Again, just like the felted splice, this will create a section in your work that is a bit thicker than the rest. On the plus side, it is reversible, so it's invisible from both sides and it works for non-feltable fibers as well. Then again, some yarns are a bit stiffer and often the resulting join can look a bit weird. And for really thin yarns, I think this isn't a feasible option either in my opinion. But otherwise, it is a really, really neat option. Number eight, the magic knot. A lot of knitters will tell you that tying knots is a big no in knitting. And for quite a couple of reasons they are actually right. But there's one prominent exception. The magic knot. Or let's call it by its much more common name the fisherman's knot. It is super simple. You are basically just tying two overhand knots close to each other. Let's do that together. 
So I've seen a lot of tutorials and they make this so complicated, but actually it's just two overhand knots close to each other and I hope everyone knows how to tie an overhand knot. So place these two ends you want to join so they face in opposite directions and then start with either end. Place the tail over and then go under and then go over again to create a loop and go under and tie your first overhand knot and do the same on the other side. Go over and under, create a loop by going over and go under. So it's over and under. So now you have two overhand knots close to each other. And now you can just pull on these ends and there is your neat and tidy over, uh, fisherman's knot or magic knot. And now you can trim away these tails. Don't be scared. Oops. Actually can get a bit closer here. And do the same on the other side. And there you go. You join these two ends together. And uh, see, I can apply a lot of force and it won't come undone. And then you can just continue knitting. Now, obviously this method leaves behind a little knot and this can be visible here, see that knot. And sometimes, I mean, it's basically impossible to calculate where this knot will end up. So it sometimes wiggles through to the front and that's not going to be all that pretty. However, if you're working with a super thin yarn or a super fuzzy yarn, then uh, even if it is in front, it will be barely noticeable. So it is actually quite the viable technique. Number nine, the back to back join. The beauty of both the Russian join and the fisherman's knot is that you don't have to weave in ends, but both don't really work for color work. But there is actually a super easy solution that may sound a bit complicated, but is actually fairly easy. To begin, knit to the position where you want to change colors and then use a paper clip and place it here right at the base of this stitch. And then think three or four stitches. And now pick up the new color you want to join and wrap it around here right at the base of this paper clip. And now pick up that new color held together. Tension the old color with the tail like this. So it should be right here at the base. And then knit those three stitches with two yarns held double. And then you can remove the paper clip, knit one more stitch, and then continue for three or four stitches held double in the new color. And then you can uh, drop the tail and uh, continue knitting. And just like that, you create a super neat transition. Obviously, um, here on the return row, you have to pay attention that you purl, in this case, purl these stitches together and treat them as one stitch. So this is what it looks like now. And just like before, you can just cut away those ends with a scissor or weave them in. But the idea is that you just cut them away and things will be super neat and secure. Now you might wonder why anyone would use this technique. Because when you're knitting flat, it's probably much easier to join in a new color here. But imagine you are knitting scrap socks. So socks with a lot of stripes where you have to join in a new color every three or five rounds. Then you usually end up with quite a lot of tails. And with this method, you don't have to weave in a single tail or maybe just two at the beginning and the end. So super useful. 
Number 10, alternating stitches. If you want to blend two colors into each other, then you can also alternate uh, stitches in the old and the new yarn. Here's how. So you will need a suitably long tail for weaving in later on. And then knit one stitch here in the old color. And then pick up the new color and knit one stitch and then pick up the old color again knit one pick up the new color make sure it's not the tail uh, where is it there it is knit one stitch and pick up the old color again and so on you can see pattern here so and continue doing this for however long you feel uh, is needed. So this is what it looks like. Now, if you're familiar with a uh, stranded knitting or fan aisle, then that's just the same. Obviously, as a result, you will have to weave in those tails later on. So you might ask, why bother at all? Well, here's the thing. Sometimes you are uh, knitting with novelty yarns or special hand dyed or hand uh, spun yarns with no two skeins are identical. And in these cases, you want to create a neat transition. So it's less obvious that these two uh, skeins are not identical. Anyway, that's how to join yarn in knitting. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment with your feedback and your questions. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.